People, we're smarter than this, we're better than this, we can think for ourselves, and we don't need this in our lives. Today, we're gonna talk about GMOs and the dangers that I feel GMOs are providing to us in this country and how they're causing an epidemic of obesity and an epidemic of poor health. I'm a nurse and I'm a farmer. Welcome to the Stony Ridge Farm. Corn, corn, corn. If not for corn, what would we do? What did we do before we had corn? You know? I think there was a time before we had corn, and I think there was a time before we had soybeans, and I think there was a time before we had giant mega farms and factory farms, and I think there was a time when the government didn't tell us what we could eat, where we could sleep, and where we went to the bathroom, and there was also a time in our lives when we didn't have genetically engineered and or modified food that affected our bodies. Now, there is a massive amount of argument about corn and soybeans and GMOs. And if you guys don't know what GMOs are, today is your lucky day because we're gonna talk about it because it's probably in the food that you've already eaten today. So a GMO is a genetically modified organism. Not like these cows and not like my chickens, they are genetically modified. Not selective breeding, but genetically modified. They didn't take pollen from one corn plant like they used to do and another corn plant and get those two corn plants together and grow a better seed. They took the actual genetic makeup of a corn plant or of a soybean plant or of a cotton seed and changed it. They messed with mother nature. Genetically engineered food. Do you, or should we be consuming this stuff? And that's what today's talk's about. Welcome to Food Friday on the Stony Ridge Farm. We're out here with the cows right now and we are on a 150 acre, first generation, all grass fed, all natural beef farm in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. I have some wonderful friends who are farmers and they farm row crops, they farm lentils, they farm beans, they farm soybeans, they farm corn, they farm and I get it, and I understand, and this is in no way meant to be a slight upon the face of any farmer. This is meant to be an awakening for everyone that's watching. The awakening is to question what we eat and to question what's being provided for us as food. What is food? I'll tell you something that's pretty disturbing. I can't raise beef cattle and process my own beef cattle on my own farm without a USDA inspector present while I process that. And that USDA inspector has to inspect my facility and stamp it, okay? I can't process and sell beef right off of my own farm in a cleaner manner than it would be processed in a much nicer and less cruel manner than it would be processed in a mega slaughterhouse. Is there something wrong with that? Tell me what you think down there. Now, let's talk about GMOs, and I've got a little bit of corn right here, and I'm not feeding my animals any grain. These are grassivores, not grainivores. They eat grain. They drink fresh water. They eat fresh grass and or hay here in the wintertime, and spring is just starting to set in. We're getting the spring flush right now, and all the grass is starting to green up just a little bit, which is super cool. Let's talk about GMOs and what it's all about. In my hand, I have a big wad of corn. This is basically field corn. It's deer corn. It's the same kind of corn that's used in making high fructose corn syrup, I would assume. It's the same kind of corn that is used in making ethanol. Did you know that over 90% of cottonseed and corn and soybean in this country is genetically engineered and or genetically modified. That means that they've taken a gene from a bacteria or a gene from another animal and they have spliced it into the genetic makeup of this corn. Now, animals such as these cows consume it, pigs consume it, chickens consume it, goats consume it, and you consume it. Is that right? Should we mess with mother nature? Should we be able to go to the grocery store and trust that the food that we're purchasing at the grocery store is of the best quality? Should we be able to trust that our food isn't made in a chemical laboratory? Should we be able 
<laughs> to buy something wholesome and good. And I've got a couple consumer items I want to show you guys, and I want to talk to you a little bit about corn syrup. I don't want to be all down on corn. This isn't about corn so much as it is about genetically modified food. I don't agree with it. I don't want to eat it. I don't put it in my body anymore. My animals don't eat it and therefore you won't consume it if you buy beef off the farm. I'm one of those people that believe that you are what you eat because it's true. Because your makeup, your body's cells rebuild themselves. They are in constant cycle. There's bacteria on your skin constantly cycling and digesting. And guys, you need to understand if you're eating genetically engineered and or genetically modified food and it's 90% of your diet, what does that say for the health of the individual? Guys, I'm also not only a farmer, I'm a registered nurse. I worked in an intensive care unit for 13 years and I have seen super infections. I have seen the dangers of obesity. I have seen diabetic, people that aren't obese, that aren't overweight, that all of a sudden became diabetic. Is it in the food that we eat? Everything about you is in the food that you eat. Everything about you, from the whites of your eyes to the color of your skin, that is all made up of the food that you eat and how your body processes that food. Is consuming a genetically modified organism going to be bad for your health in the long run? Many, many studies have shown that it's completely harmless. Those studies, <laughs> how long have we had genetically modified food? How long have we had genetically modified food? What did those studies prove? That in the short term, genetically modified food or genetically modified organisms don't harm you, but how do we have long-term studies on this? We have to have years, we have to have lifespans of people, don't we, in order to really study the effects. In my mind, I'm guessing that over the next 10 to 25 years, we are gonna see genetically modified food become completely outlawed. We are going to find out. This is in my opinion, and you guys can share your opinion. In my opinion, selective breeding and breeding for the best traits is important. In my opinion, taking a genetic modification and putting it into a bean or a seed so that it can be sprayed with glyphosate or Roundup or so that it's insect resistant is wrong. Nature has this stuff here for a reason, guys, and we can't go monkeying around with Mother Nature. If we genetically modified human beings, what would you think of that? Think for a second. If we genetically modified our cows just to walk with little bitty legs and were big old T-bone steaks, that's all they were, it was just a big old steak, would that be right? If we genetically modified sheep, I know we can clone things nowadays, so if we, we genetically made our food, is that right? Is that the way that we're supposed to live? Have we figured out a way to scientifically justify monkeying with mother nature? That's the question I'm posing to you guys today. I'm a farmer, I'm a registered nurse, I'm a healthcare provider, and I'm upset. Now, let me show you some of the things that you may or may not know have corn syrup in them. This is maple syrup. This is maple syrup. This comes from a tree and this comes from corn. Right here, buttery rich Mrs. Butterworth. When I was a kid, I remember eating this stuff on the kitchen counter with my grandma, with my mom, and I remember thinking, mmm, that sure is good. I had never had real maple syrup from a maple tree the whole time I was a child. I never tasted real maple syrup. All I had was this. And the number one ingredient in this right here, this is again Mrs. Butterworth's extra buttery artificially flavored syrup. The number one ingredient is high fructose corn syrup. Corn syrup is the second. Contains, what is this, water? <laughs> It's corn syrup, guys. I'm not eating this garbage. I'm not eating it. I'm eating something pure. This came from nature. This came from a tree. This is from a corn plant that's been processed in a factory and made to full taste like buttery syrup. Is this real? Is this what you want to put in your body or is this? $7.50 versus $3.85. Is double the cost worth double the health? You tell me. Let's grab something else. Here's ketchup. Hunts. No preservatives. There's no preservatives in here. That's great. Hunt's tomato ketchup. 
fantastic. All right, well, let's look at the back of our Hunt's Ketchup right here. Tomato concentrate made from vine-ripened tomatoes, high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup distilled in vinegar, salt, onion powder, natural flavors. What are natural flavors? I don't know what natural flavors are. Why does ketchup, why does ketchup need corn syrup in it? Why do these things need corn syrup in them, guys? My cows don't need corn syrup. I don't think I need corn syrup. Why does everything have to have corn syrup? What's a better solution? What happened to sugar cane? I think we used to make sugar from sugar cane, didn't we? Here are a couple organic solutions to sugar. Sugar that comes from maple syrup. Sugar that comes from natural sources like honey. We have honeybees here on the farm. Why do we need high fructose corn syrup in all these things? And the answer is cheap food. Cheap food makes cheap health, makes you sick to pay expensive doctor bills. Cheap food cost you in the long run. Whether it costs you tomorrow, whether it costs you the next day, whether it costs you 10 years from now, cheap food will cost you in the long run, guys. So I want to pose the question to you. Tell me what you think about GMO, genetically modified food. Tell me what you think about genetically modified seed. Should someone be able to get a patent on a seed? Should we be monkeying with mother nature. Should we change things and take something from a completely different organism and genetically splice it into our food? I think this is a question that we all need to think about and I think we all need to think about our own health and the health of our bodies and what our bodies are actually made of. And our bodies are made of what we eat. It's just a plain and simple fact. I'm not advocating for you to eat in any other way than you already have, but I will tell you this, I recently lost 85 pounds. And what did I do? I cut my carbohydrates back and I only ate real food. Real food, real chicken off the farm, real beef right here. Only non-GMO organic real food, real whole food. So next time you walk through the grocery store, I pose this question to you. Do you have the time to pick something up and read the label and decide whether that's a healthy option for you? Or are you buying food just for taste? When it comes to beef cows like this, are you buying your beef that's grain fed or corn fed or feedlot beef? Are you buying it just for the taste? Are you looking for nutrition? Are you looking for the appropriate nutrition? Are you just buying for taste? That's why we're raising grass fed beef. That's why I became a farmer because I want food to change. I want to inspire change and dropping 85 pounds over about nine months really showed me that what I was eating was wrong and there are real foods that we need to be consuming, not this garbage, not food made in a factory, not food that's made up of a bunch of chemicals. When you pick up the label and it has more than 15 ingredients and it has all this xanthum disorbinate schmabble dabba dabba on there, scratch your head and start thinking, is that what I want my body to be made out of? Is that what I want? my body to be made out of. Is that going to make me a healthier person, make me live a longer life with good health, or is that destroying my health? Is that going to feed the doctor down the road, or is that feeding my body, nourishing my body? Guys, I'm Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to my farm. Please jump in, watch another video, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you back here on the farm. I wanted to give you some food for thought. This is not against farmers. This is a question that needs to be posed. Should we be putting genetically modified food in our bodies? Should we eat good and pure sugar sources? Should we eat good and pure protein sources, whether you're vegan or whether you're not? Should we have to genetically modify something so that we can spray a poison on it and then sell that to consumers as good food? I pose that question to you guys. Thanks a lot for watching here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. Hit that like button, jump in, subscribe to the channel. We've got lots more fun to have here on the farm. Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge, bring your